All right, this is image compression video two. So all I want to do here is sort of work through a more comprehensive example with a, with a sort of a better image. Do some calculations so we can see what's happening in general. Maybe come up with some general formulas or ideas. So goal. A more comprehensive example. So consider the following image. Shown here. So this is me, by the way. Age nine. This is from my Swiss passport, actually. So this image right here, this is a 200 by 200 image in grayscale. This is 200 by 200 in grayscale. So these are all values from zero to one. As we discussed, this is with zero being black and one being white. So this can be loaded into MATLAB, etc., etc. I can provide code for all of that. And so if we take this image and we look at the singular values. So consider the singular value decomposition. So this will be our matrix A. Right, so this is 200 by 200. So the singular value decomposition, keep in mind how big all of these are. Each of these is 200 by, by 200 in this case. These are big matrices, right? These are not matrices we can easily write down. However, we can look at the singular values. Right? Just the following. So I'm not gonna list them all, of course, because there are 200 of them. But just to give a sense of perspective, here are the first few. Let's do the first five. So you can see already there's a lot of variance being captured just by the first few before they get small. Right, this is just in the first one, this is lots. So then we might sort of go down this avenue. We might say like, okay, well, what happens if we start just preserving certain amounts of singular values? So first let's try this. Let's try preserving just four singular values. So in other words, we'll go back to the singular value list. These four are the only ones, should I count right, that will keep those. So we'll recreate sigma as a new sigma prime. And what we'll do is we'll do a is, or a prime is u sigma prime v transpose. This is what we get. Following image. So this is a result, right? So it's not very good, but you can see sort of what's going on. You can see that it's it's a face, um, looks sort of alien. One thing to note is when we're keeping four singular values, what's happening here in this picture is really sort of interesting, is that every column is a linear combination of just four columns, right? So if you think of this picture as constructed from columns, every column is a linear combination of just U1, U2, U3, U4. That's it. And we've managed to create something fairly recognizable as a human being, even if it's me, right? Now for what it's worth, we can also calculate the amount of variance that's preserved here. So the variance in the data In this case, um, as a proportion, just so we're clear, is 97.38%. So remember how it works? That's taken. That's by taking the first four singular values, S1 squared plus S2 squared plus S3 squared plus S4 squared, dividing by the sum of all the SI squares. That gives us that result. 
So let me bullet this. Let me call this A. So we have a breakout. And we have this broken down. So let's do a similar one. Let's do like, what if we preserved more than this? So for example, what if we wanted to preserve, what do we said? Okay, this is 97.38% of the variance. What if we wanted to try for a 99, right? So to preserve 99%, it turns out that we need nine singular values. Right, so you know how to do this, right? We calculate the minimum number of S's that we need to keep. So this proportion is 0.99 or more. Right? So here's the result. So here we see it's better. Now, for what it's worth, this is actually, um, once we get to nine singular values, this is 99.03% of the variance. Now, of course, if we're storing sort of dating, uh, so if we're st storing data, we may look at this and say that this isn't really good enough. Um, so what if we want to bump it up and say like, what about 99.9% .9 of the data? So let me clear the screen. I'm going to move these images around so we still have them to reference. Um, and then we'll sort of go a little further. And then when we get to something interesting, we can talk about, talk about the data savings. So. Again, just so we're clear, this is the original. This is four singular values. This is nine singular values. So suppose we wish to preserve, say, 99%, 99.9% of the variance. It turns out we need 31 singular values. So when we do this, it actually turns out to be basically, we approximate the two decimal digits. So it's a little bit more than that, but this is sort of the cutoff. So here's the picture. So this is still, this is better, right? This is really actually pretty good compared to the original. And again, to keep in mind is in this case, if we think of this as a bunch of columns, basically each column is built out of 31 columns. Right? So here, here each, each column is built out of 31 U vectors, right? So in other words, U1, U2, etc. So again, also, just to be clear, when we say built out of, we mean is a linear combination of. And this gives a reasonable good picture, a 99.9% .9 of the variance of the original image, if you like. So um, I do want to show you what happens when we just have one singular value, but let me take a break briefly to talk just about the data savings. Now, this is a really crude example, of course. What we're doing in this course is not um, as sophisticated as actual data compression techniques work in the real world, but this is just to give you an idea. And so what I want you to think about is imagine that, don't worry about the difference between storing an integer and storing a real number and things like that. Just think about like, like values, we store values, right? So we have to think, how many values are we storing? So in the original, the one on the upper left, right, in that one, right, what we're doing is we're storing 200 by 200, right? That's 40,000 numbers. Now let's look at the one directly above it. This one, 31 SV. So you could say, well, what's the difference, right? I'm still storing a 200 by 200 image. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about storing it differently and, and not storing every single pixel, right? So let's think about what we described as how we're building each column. So what we need is we need to store 31 U vectors, right? U1 through 
U31. Each is a vector with 200 entries. So this is 31 times 200 values. All right, then for each column in A, right, each column in A is a linear combination of those, right? So each column in A is a linear combination of those. Therefore, each column needs 31 coefficients. There are 200 columns. So there are 200 times 31 coefficients. Those are also values. So the total here is 31 times 200 plus 200 times 31. Doesn't matter the way that we write these. This is 12,400 values. So just to compare, right, in the original image, we need to store 40,000 values. If we use this method of storing the data, we only have to store 12,400 values. So we could look at the ratio. This is 31% exactly. So what we've done is we've, we've reduced the data storage to 31% of the original while keeping a reasonable looking image. So this is how this plays into like how we're saving data, right? by representing the, the image in a way that allows us to store building blocks instead of the actual raw image data, we sort of have a much more efficient way of doing things. Now, just as a final fun note, right? Here's the image with one singular value. So, right, what you see is it's sort of an interesting sort of quilted pattern, right? So this is because Everything is a, is a multiple. Every column is a multiple of every other column, right? They're all multiples of U1. So all columns are multiples of U1 only. Uh, in addition, this actually preserves 90.85% of the variance in this picture. Right? And if you look at it compared to the original, all right, so again, take a trip back, compare this one to this one. You can see sort of some of the same features, right? There's sort of a, a dark part that goes right down here that corresponds to the dark part of the face right down there. We've got some light edges, light edges. We've got sort of a little bit darker at the top where the hair is, a little bit darker at the top where the hair is. And so we start to see like that variation, that variance in the image is still preserved even with one singular value. It's not good enough, of course, um, you know, for, for, for image storage purposes, or for, you know, it's not, it's not a good photo, but it's interesting nonetheless. And so what happens in the real world is there's this sort of trade-off between how much do you want to compress the data and how much quality do you want to lose? And so generally what happens is, you know, you, you want to store the, the quality, so you sacrifice it by requiring more data. But of course you can go in the other direction too and you can sacrifice quality in order to have data savings. So that's it, let me close that out.